Hello YouTube world, my name is Nicholas Montez and you're watching my YouTube channel, The Teenage Movie Critic, and welcome back to another YouTube channel video. I'm so excited to have y'all back here together again. And in today's video, we're going to be doing a ranking for the end of the month for June of 2023 with the retro films that I saw this month. I saw 34 films, that's pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and get started ranking all 34 films. Now this film was kind of boring, I mean the only good thing about it was really Ethan Hawke. The whole movie was like about this like scientist that kind of reminded me like Charles Darwin and finding all this stuff. Overall it was kind of boring to be honest. This one was also kind of fun but it also was very disgusting as you had a movie with fathers like effing girls. And it's just not the best science set. Plus, you also have fathers killing people and guys killing people. It's just uh, such a weird film. And then it, guys effing go other guys. It's just a weird film. This was also another weird film, as in the title here. But it had a good, it had a good premise of doing all this stuff, but with it, it, mixing it with science. And also, this is one of Robert Downey Jr.'s films as his younger self, and he plays like a bully in this one, and his role is just kind of forgettable in this one. So I would say this is a bit one of the more forgettable films in Robert Downey Jr.'s filmography. I think that this movie actually has some okay elements to it. It's kind of fun to see all these, so it's kind of cool to see all these soldiers but mostly just played it too safe, it was a little too quiet, and the story was just kind of boring. Now this movie, I was honestly bored throughout the entire thing. To me, it just felt like a gen another generic action film that starred Bruce, I think starred Bruce Willis. The action was pretty great, but besides that, like none of the characters were interesting and it's not entirely memorable. It's just another basic action flick. I think that this movie actually had some interesting elements to it and kind of doing this, you know, Mexican cartel type stuff with Mexican and all that good stuff and Mexican culture, it kind of explored that in a pretty interesting way. I wasn't the biggest fan in the way they, they treated off like certain plot lines and stuff like that, but I thought it kind of worked and also the action was pretty gory. This was actually my first Barbie movie that I've actually have ever seen in my life, and it was actually quite good. You know, going to New York and seeing our two Barbies that kind of uh, are black and white Barbie that we're going to be seeing in the live action film. And you know, one is Malibu, one is Brooklyn. Kind of fun, and the, the story is a bit fun. At the same time, we know that this whole movie is just for little girls and kids. It is not targeted for someone like me, so I thought it was good but it's definitely not for me. Now this movie, I thought was okay. It was all right. It's a basic shark movie. I was kind of disappointed that all these big stars like Samuel Jackson and stuff like that didn't come in the other sequels, but for its time, it was all right. This was also a bit better of a film, but it's still not quite there yet. It has some great action sequences with the humans. I don't remember the sharks in here and the characters are just forgettable, but the action itself was actually a little bit more memorable for me.
Now this one I actually pretty enjoyed. I thought it was very suspenseful as you have this family living in this house and they're trying to, you know, find out who killed this person and who's stalking who. And it has some pretty dark stuff in it. And I kind of overall pretty enjoyed it. Not the biggest end of the way the ending was, but I thought overall it was actually a pretty good little thriller. Now, as the second Mission Impossible film and my first Mission Impossible movie that I have watched, I would say that this one is all right. Um, you know, it's a basic movie. It has some cool action. It has great chemistry with the characters. The score is phenomenal. But it just feels like a basic action movie. It doesn't really pop any steam. The only thing that's inter the only thing that's cool and clever about it is the mace gr the mask gripping stuff. That's really much the only thing. I still think it's a good Mission Impossible film, but it's easily the weakest of them. Now this movie is of course cheesy, but that's kind of what I like about it, as you have this guy that wants to explore sharks and kind of these super sharks and how exactly are the sharks involved in the, to the story. So I kind of like that element of, about it. And I also like the way that the characters were kind of used and stuff like that. So I thought it was organized in a pretty good way. Now this one I think it's a bit better when it comes to the Insidious films. Granted, it kind of suffers because the next two films don't have the other characters in it. But it's a good movie and a good sequel to this to these films. I think it continues the franchise in a really great way. And overall, it just does some great things. Has some great, a pretty good story and some pretty good scares at the same time. This one, I actually felt like it felt a lot more personal. Even though it's different characters, you kind of cared about it and developed them just a little bit more. Plus, the scares are great. It's another pretty good Insidious film. Now, Magic Camp, I think it's a fine movie. I actually saw this because I missed some 2020 movies, so I wanted to check it out, even though they removed it on Disney, off of Disney+. Plus. And I thought it was fine. The characters are pretty predictable. The story is okay. The, the cast is okay. The movie is fine, but it's a good movie. Now this one I think has some flaws, but also some of the weaknesses of my Indiana Jones films. Of course, the, the fact that this is an action-based story, I love it. The characters that you get to meet with through this movie with Indiana Jones, it's fun. The short round character played by Ki Huy Kwan to, to come up to be this great actor in the future, he's great in it. The action itself is pretty good, and not the big i, I kind of like the weeks for india but not something i was expecting because we don't really explore any other places in the indiana jones world but overall i still thought it was a good indiana jones movie so this movie actually stars shamik moore miles morales and he is in the in the city where this big hurricane happened, I forgot what, what it's called, and they're like dealing with like drug lords and all that good stuff. And I think it kind of had a pretty good story while he's uh, marrying someone. It just kind of had a unique story to it that I thought was really good. Project Power, I actually thought this film was gonna be a bit more than what I thought it was as you have, I thought it was gonna be um, Jamie Foxx as a superhero, but that's not technically what we got, but it was still a good action movie. It it did some stuff I wasn't expecting of Jamie Foxx, like actually being like very impulsive to this little, to this young girl. I'm like, that's crazy. It's pretty fun, has some cool action, and it, it worked for me. I thought it was a good movie. This is another pretty good movie, you know, it has some, it's not really an action movie, but it's more of the intensifier where you have that scene where he's going down 
and if the sweat touches he drops it on the hand it's so intensified the score is fantastic the characters are pretty good and just the introduction to this franchise was honestly pretty good Now this is actually a pretty good movie. It starts out kind of boring, but I think once you get to that point where it gets to the boy's birthday and you start to realize that his parents died and the little girl is seeing that the mom hasn't told him. It's so sad, so like crazy, and you feel for the characters and I honestly really enjoyed that part. I think actually this movie has some enjoyable beats. Of course, you bring in James Bond, John, not John Travolta, uh, Sean Connery as Indiana Jones' dad in the film, and they have a fun dynamic as they're kind of alike in some ways, and the, w the way that they kind of get into the action at the same time, it's like, it's really cool stuff. So I honestly really enjoyed this film more than I thought I would. This to me is my favorite Indiana Jones film as it really just ties all this story from the very beginning and has a pretty good story as you're f fighting these demons and it honestly just works for me plus it's I all honestly kind of got emotional from the beginning of the film so I really enjoyed Insidious Last Key. Now this movie actually really surprised me as it's basically about this boy who, who sees all these weird things and people and people want to send him away but that at the same time he finds love and it's just kind of a pretty good story that it's like you're trying to deal with your own problems but you're tr people are trying to take you away but you're also finding love. I think it's a pretty good movie. This movie, I think, is actually a big surprise for me because I'm like, a mo an animated movie about people eating animal crackers and they turn into actual animals? That is so stupid, so dumb, but it works because the characters are pretty enjoyable, the story is pretty fun, and just seeing animals is fun, so I enjoyed it. Now, as the first time seeing an Indiana Jones film, I thought this was actually a pretty good film. Where, you know, it established everything that this film was trying to do with the, with the, uh, you know, real action. It has some, a pretty good, you know, adventure with it. The character of Indiana Jones is pretty fun. The score is fantastic. And just the, the landscape and the environment that we were exploring, it was fun. And this is peak, this is true Indiana Jones at its finest. Now this to me is actually the Mission Impossible film that start my started my love and my likeness for the franchise because I'm like, not the biggest fan of the first two, but then we get Mission Impossible 3 and I'm like, oh yeah, this is awesome. I can't wait to see the next fourth, fifth, and sixth one, and then the seventh one. I want to go see the seventh one in theaters. This was so good where it was able to do real stunts real and also really cool action. This to me is definitely the best Transformers film as you have a great character and a great character that you're that doesn't speak as his voice gets taken now, but you also have interesting human characters with John Cena and Haley Steinfeld and even then the soundtrack is pretty good as it ties into the way Bumblebee talks throughout the movie. And also the action is still great. Of course the action is great in these movies as they are CGI spectacles. So I really enjoyed Bumblebee. Now Spree was a film that I thought was absolutely crazy where you have the guy that plays uh, one of the kids from Stranger Things, I forgot his name at this point, but his Thing as he's driving around picking up people he's making people drink water so that way they can steal like this stuff on the spree accounts and then um, trying to get involved with the cops but live streaming all this and trying to do better than this guy but killing these people it's like it really explores social media culture in such an interesting way that it's like 
this is exactly what would happen on social media online live that crazy things like this would happen like there's actually weirdos out there and i thought that was really great about the film plus the actor the, the person that played him i thought was great so this is a great film for me Now, this was a crazy road rage movie. Um, I thought uh, Russell Crowe in the film was fantastic. I thought his performance as this killer was great. And just everything about it just kind of you like, like were intensified throughout the entire thing. It was just so brilliantly well done. I loved. I, I loved on him. This to me was also another great film as you, at the same time, I had some issues. I of course liked the way it kind of mixed in all these different plots where you find out that the Syndicate is basically this anti-version of Emma, M Impossible Mission Force, but you also get like, what would the Impossible, Impossible Mission Force do if they were caught by the CIA? Th those are like interesting ideas that I thought was really cool. I also liked um, pretty, some of the action and uh, bringing the crew all together again and then kind of working beh behind the CIA's back. It was just kind of fun. Also, I like Baldwin's character was pretty fun. There was a couple of, you know, villain problems that I liked, but honestly, the film is still great. It's still a great Mission Impossible film, but I would say the other one is better. Now, this to me was an Indiana Jones film where I was like, this is my favorite film for Indiana Jones, where it has the action, it has the great humor, it has the pretty cool family story and the dynamics that has an arc and, you know, consequences and history and conflict. And it also has an interesting story as why are we getting, what, what is the point of getting this MacGuffin instead of just putting it in a museum? There's actually conflict to that because it leads to aliens and and uh ufos and stuff like that and then of course he marries the girl in the end it's just a satisfying film that i think is the best indiana jones film now this is easily my favorite film of the bunch as it just has this story that kind of felt like the fast five of the Mission Impossible films where you bring in this team, this guy, one guy, bring in these two other people, and it, they have great chemistry, they're pretty fun. Well, one guy is incredibly great at doing stuff, one girl is incredibly attractive, but they also have this great story and action, and the threat of setting, of having these nuclear codes and these nukes going to launch on, on Russia, that's really exciting and really pulls you forward that they don't repeat that in the next couple of Mission Impossible movies, which is my favorite thing. Now, we'll see what happens with Fallout, because I don't know, I'm going to be seeing it later today, but I love, I really love this film, where it uses this basic thing that is used in other movies later, but it's actually used in the plot very well. So I actually watched this film to get ready for the Flash movie, and there are some similarities to it, but honestly, as its own terms of not comparing it to The Flash, I think that this film is great, and it's much better than The Flash movie itself. As a film, I mean, it just takes, like, it kind of, like, reminded me of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, where it's, like, it's a film about Flash, it's a film about Rocket, but it has Guardians in it. This film is about Flash, but it has the Justice League in it. And they use the Justice League in interesting ways, where you have Batman, who is not Bruce Wayne, it's Thomas Wayne, and instead, Bruce Wayne dies. You have Cyborg working for the government. You have Aquaman and Wonder Woman almost starting World War III, along with Deathstroke and Black Manta killing people and all that stuff. And uh, um, Ocean Master being in charge, being like this general of some sorts. It just takes all these what-if scenarios, but also a great story co connected to Flash's thing as to why is he doing this? And it really works for me. So I really love this. a film that I was easily impressed by. I mean, you have Seth Rogen playing two versions of himself. It starts as a guy who was raised in the 1930s, due to the great, great Depression, falls on a pickle jar, wakes up many years later, 
discovers the real world, the new world that has changed in New York, in Brooklyn, starts a pickle company, um, takes down a billboard, uh, prays for his, for his lost relatives, and it's just a bunch of fun. It's great. And I'm actually going to review this movie next month because it is a great film that did not need to be that this good. It was so good, so great. I loved it. That is my ranking of the June retro movies. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All my social media is definitely about the channel over there. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.